thank you for joining. We give God the praise. We give him the worship. We are so grateful for this amazing time, the amazing time in praise and worship. Um, as led by the Minister of Worship, we are so grateful to God. And um, I'm so thankful that you've allowed me to join you in your homes and also joining me in ours, in my home, as Christian Church. Thank you for joining. I'm trusting your families with you this morning and you're all uh, ready to receive the Word of God as we get ready to go into the message that God has for us. And I believe that you, your life will never be the same. I believe that this Word will bring a change. It will bring a shift in your life, in your situation, in Jesus' name. Let's do this as we normally do. Would you just lift up your Bibles? or whatever instruments that you're using for the Word of God, either your Apple devices or your Android devices. And let's just repeat after me and say, this is my Bible. It is the infallible, it is the inspired, and it is the sufficient Word of God. Would you declare that I will be taught the Word of God today, and my heart and my mind and my body shall be changed by the hearing, the doing of this word. Declare with me, this is my receiving day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God be glorified today on this April 26th morning as we go straight into the word of the Lord. It is a new season. It is a new paradigm. And as we, as I broadcast from my home this morning, I'm trusting that you will receive a word in season. This morning, we'll go straight into the word of the Lord. And I will be reading uh, as a text, same as last week. If you recall, we, we, uh, we are in the season where the Lord is saying to us that my word to you is a simple word. It's not designed to confuse you. It's not designed to uh, bring um, uh, just confusion into your life, into your family. But God's intent and God's desire is that you know him and that you get, get what he's saying to you and he's able to lead you clearly without any confusion. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3 will be our text reading for this morning. Praise the Lord, it will be on your screen. Let's, let's read together and um, if you have your family with you and your, and, your, and, your, and your Bibles, if it's convenient, let's all read in one accord. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Amen. I bring greetings for, from the entire Victory House family, my family here, to yours wherever you are in the world, whether here in Canada or across the continents and other continents of the world. Let's go. One, two, go. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Verse 3 this is the key one. It says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, his cunning, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we go into your word. Lord, would you send a word that would unlock destinies, that would break yokes, that would destroy every bondage, every perspective, every mindset, and bring it into alignment with your word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just do a quick recap from last week again. Uh, we are looking at the simplicity of the message, the simplicity of of our Christian walk. We, God doesn't want us to make it more than what it is. Simply, it is about Christ. It is about knowing Him. It's about walking in the power that His life, that His death and His resurrection has bequeathed to us. From last week, we looked at this concept and we focused on 
an aspect of it that is quite powerful and we're going to extend that thought this morning and I want you to stay with me and I trust that you will listen carefully last week a quick recap we looked at the power of hearing as a basis or the basic steps of actually knowing God knowing God walking with him every single thing that you and I will experience on this side of eternity is going to be based on our ability to hear from God. How powerful that is. And we recap from last week and we mentioned, if you, if, if you can, um, either if you were with us last week or you can watch the broadcast from last week. One of the things we mentioned is simply that hearing is necessary. Indeed, it is absolutely essential for every Christian, every believer, everyone, anyone who wants to walk in the power and the victory that God has for you and for me. Three things that we can recap from last week and then we will start off today. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you and your notepads, uh, I think it would be great to just take and recap some of this. The first one is, we said last week that without hearing, uh, without hearing from God or the ability to hear, there is absolutely no way that you can have relationship with God. It's, it, it doesn't work because every relationship is based on communication. Obviously, prayer is communication. But first, you and I must hear from God for us to be able to build a solid foundation that exercises all the blessings, all the benefit that God has for us. And the scripture here that we recall is Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, where we declare that faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Every believer is a product of faith. And so if you do not have faith, you cannot really be a, a believer of Christ because you cannot see God with your natural senses, but you see him by faith. Faith means you are able to hear God. It means that you've heard him because it says faith comes by hearing. You heard the gospel. You heard the message of the kingdom. You heard the word of deliverance that Jesus has sent your way. And that's how. Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. It says that we should walk by faith and not by sight. It means that every step you take as a Christian or as a believer, indeed as anyone who lives on this side of eternity, you need faith to be able to execute, to be able to live the life that God has for you. That's the first one. The second major point from last week, this is all recap, but it's important because as we move into what God has for us today, you will understand how this all comes together. The power of hearing, the power of hearing. The second point is that your success in life depends on hearing. If anybody must succeed, if anybody must make any impact, if anybody must affect not just their own lives, or the lives of their family and indeed their community they must hear and here's what the Lord says to us in Mark 4 24 he says the measure listen the measure with which you hear determines the measure of success and he says to him that hears more shall be given the ability or the increase that comes to you and I is dependent on our ability to hear and the measure to which we hear will determine the measure of success that is going to follow after you. I declare over your life this morning, I declare over your family that you will hear God and that you will receive an abundant blessing as you hear. And, and just a, a, a mention here, I recall clearly that God, the Lord has said to us from last week, he says, concerning hearing, even though you hear, even though you, um, um, even though you, you begin to exercise uh, listening, that hearing is not just a passive activity. It is an active work. 
It is an active work. In other words, you are not just listening to the words, but you are receiving the words. And that is causing you to respond in the name of Jesus. John chapter 5 verse 25, also concerning your success in life uh, and the measure to which you hear. It says, and when that which is in Christ and when the dead in Christ shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. That's a powerful word, you know. Powerful because it says, even though you are in a situation today that seems untenable, that seems like there is no coming out of it, that seems like it is dead and gone, dead in the water. It says if you can hear the voice of God, you are able to rise from that situation. That's a place to shout hallelujah. We give God the praise. And the third point from last week, if you, if you recall, it, it simply means that you must have ears to hear. You must have ears to hear. And by ears, we're talking about spiritual ears. And what we recall from last week is to have spiritual ears, you must be born again. Because your spirit comes alive. Your spirit is born again. It is reborn. Like Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and verse 3. He says, except a man is born again, he cannot see. You cannot have an experience, an awareness of the kingdom of God because you do not have the spiritual ears, the spiritual awareness to even observe it. Hallelujah. That's from last week. And, and let me just point out in John 3 and I think uh, verse 6 and then if you go down a, a little bit, it says, He that is born of flesh is flesh and he that is born of the spirit is spirit. In other words, if you are simply a living being on this side and you've not encountered Jesus, you are simply living at the level of your natural senses. If you must, if you must, if you must move beyond that, then you must be born again. Your spirit must come alive. And all this is coming to say to us that it is time for you and I to get to walk with God, to hear him. And to experience the victory that God has for us. Hallelujah. Somebody might ask me, how do I get born again? You accept him as the Lord of your life. You, you, you accept Jesus. You receive him. It says, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Listen in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. He says that we're not born of corruptible seed. But we are born of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. You, as you receive the word of God this morning, even in your living rooms, as you receive the message that is flowing through your, your phones or your internet system, it has the power to change your life. And I declare that as you receive this word, your life will never be the same again. And that's a recap from last week. And so let's move into what God has for us today. As you listen, there are a few things I want to point out. The first one is to recap and to say, God speaks. If you must hear God, it means that He is speaking. And it is important that we, we confront the, 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 the thinking that God does not speak. Because, because that means that if he does not speak, then there's nothing to hear. And what a sad state that would be for anyone to be in. But we are convinced and we are assured in the scriptures because the scriptures cannot be broken. The Bible says God speaks. And here are two things that you can look at to confirm that. In the book of Revelation chapter 2. And verse 29, he says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. What the Spirit is saying to the churches. For sure, God is speaking to us, the church. Not only is he speaking towards the church, the Bible tells us in Revelations 1 and 10, even as John the Beloved moved into a higher place in the Spirit to be able to hear God. The Bible says, and I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard a great voice. John heard the voice of God. He heard God speaking. He heard the word of God. And the scriptures tell us 
that over here says that I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Our God is alive and he is well. Amen. Amen. So, so it puts to rest in our hearts. In our minds, the question about whether God speaks or not. And if you're listening in your homes as you consider and ponder this, I want to share with you a few, um, a few things about how God speaks. Very important so that you can begin to look at your own life experience and you can identify immediately as we go through some of this, uh, some of this uh, thoughts as to how God speaks to us to notice that indeed he has been speaking to you. It may be that you haven't been aware of it. Just like Samuel did not know that God was speaking to him. And God said, Samuel, Samuel. And then he went to Eli for clarification. Amen. Now watch this. I'll just read out to you about six or seven ways that God speaks to us. And there are many more ways. But I want to highlight the six or seven because it's very important. So that you can take the time and ponder on this. And you can notice that God indeed has been speaking to you and to me. The very first one, and I'll read through, and then I want to focus on about two or three of these ways through which God speaks to you and I. The first one, God speaks to us by impression in our heart. By impression. It's a, it's a sense in your heart. In other words, another word to use there is He speaks to us through our conscience. And we're going to break that down in a bit. Very powerful, I think, if you notice. Uh, if you're able to grab this, then you can see indeed that God has been speaking to you. The second thing about, um, about how God speaks is that he speaks to us through open visions. Open visions. Acts chapter 10 uh, verse 1 to 3. He also speaks to us through night visions. Night visions. Night visions. He spoke to Paul through night visions. Number four, God can speak to you and can speak to me as he did in the times of old. He can speak to you face to face as in God will appear before you and he will speak to you. And many may not have experienced this in this. Very few have experienced this and Moses was one of them. Hallelujah. But let's go through all the lists and then we can focus on some of this. The, the fifth way God can speak to you is he can speak to you through a quiet or a still small voice a still small voice powerful powerful and then the sixth way is God speaks to us through his word through his word the word of God he speaks to us through his word and then the seventh one he can speak to us through anointed worship and praise Praise the name of the Lord. Let's do this in the time we have. Let's just walk through uh, some of these um, ways that God can speak to us. And I'm trusting that you listen. I'm not just listening that you receive this in your heart. And then you begin to exercise and practice the concepts and the thoughts that God will place or, or cause your heart to awaken as you hear this. Let's look at a bit more closely at the first way that God speaks to us that I listed here. And this is not in any order of, uh, of priority. God can speak to us as he chooses. But let's look at the first one. We're saying that God speaks to in our heart. I want to point out Proverbs 20, 27. This is a scripture that you, you should memorize because it shows you that your spirit is communicating with the Lord. Remember, we are spirit beings. The Bible says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. In Proverbs 20, 27, it's a very powerful scripture. It says that, it says the spirit of a man, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. In other words, your spirit is looking inside of your heart. It's able to determine your motives. It's able to seek out your thinking, your perspectives, the reason why you did something. You see, many people would look at you and not realize what's going on in your mind they may not see that you're not happy they may not see that you that you are worried in some areas because you have a good way of hiding it 
but your spirit inside of you knows everything that is going on. Uh, you, you've met some people. The Bible tells us that there are people in the past, in the scriptures, and even today, who may actually be planning evil against you or planning something that is not in your favor, but yet they're smiling with you. But your spirit, hallelujah, your spirit can pick up some things because it's not on the outward. It's in the inward. Amen. But look at this. Look at this. Very powerful. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. I would love you to read actually all the way from 9 uh, maybe to uh, verse 14. But it's important that we look at um, uh, some of this. But the, here's what I want to point out. Stay with me. In chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1, Paul had come to the Corinthian church and he has says, I'm not coming to you with excellency of speech, with wisdom and all that stuff, but I'm coming to you in a demonstration of power through the Spirit of God. See what it says, I determine not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I want you to read that entire chapter, but let's jump all the way to verse 9. And it tells us in verse 9, it says, as long as it's concerning you, as you're listening, it says that I has not seen, yet have not heard, it has not entered the heart of anyone what God has planned for you. I know that God has planned powerful things for you. He has planned goodness for your life. He's planned prosperity, favor, all that you are worthy of. God has planned that and even more. Amen, amen, amen. And so this morning, even as you listen to what I'm, what I'm sharing with you right now, it says in verse 10, listen to verse 10, it says, But God has revealed these things to us, how? By His Spirit. That's powerful. It says God has revealed the things that He has planned for us by His Spirit by his spirit for the spirit searches all things and ye the deep things of god look at verse 11 it says for what man knows the things of a man save the spirit of the man which is in him even so the things of god knows no man but the spirit look at verse 12 but it says but we have received not the spirit of the world carefully we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? That we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Praise God. Verse 12 is saying, the spirit that we receive is not of this world, but we receive the spirit that is of God. And when we receive the spirit that is of God, we are able to know the things that are freely given to us. How does this make sense in terms of God speaking to us? It means that if you have the spirit of the Lord, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, your spirit is already being fused. God is able to show you through the listening of your spirit, through the ears of your spirit, the things that have been given to you. And once you know that, your conscience, your motives, everything inside of you, it, it can discern what your thoughts are. It can discern whether you're doing right or wrong. And your conscience, being nurtured by God's word, is able to prompt you and is able to uh, uh, speak to you when you're going in a way that does not please God. Praise God, your conscience. So God speaks to you. And maybe God has been speaking to you concerning something in your life. Perhaps concerning your marriage. Perhaps concerning your job. And you've ignored it. You've sort of turned away. But can I ask you in the place of prayer today. As you listen keenly to what God is speaking to you in your heart. You will observe and you will know that there is the right way to go. As you draw close to him. There's a scripture that says that there's a voice behind me. The voice of the Lord saying this is the way that you need to go. Walk in it. As you continue to trust your relationship with God. As you continue to spend time with him. Your inner spirit, your inner being is being nurtured. And as you are hearing more will be revealed to you. You can walk then in boldness. You can walk in confidence knowing that God is speaking to you 
about what he prompts you to do. Amen. Amen. Now, we, we, we also talked about a, a few other things, but let, let's look at um, the open visions. This is a very simple one. I won't go too deep into this, but I want to point out to you that God spoke to Cornelius. He was a Roman officer, and the Bible tells us that Cornelius um, was somebody who feared God. He, he revered God. He served God. He honored God, and God showed him an open vision. The Bible says uh, in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 3, if you read it carefully, it says, and, and an angel appeared to him and told him and said, Cornelius, I have something for you to do. There's someone that you need to send to Joppa so that he can meet someone that will tell you more things. So God will talk to you through open uh, visions. To either improve or increase your spiritual depth or for whatever reason at all. In the case of Cornelius, he was to learn more from Peter who was actually at Joppa at the time. The Bible tells us that God also speaks to us through night visions. Acts chapter 16 and verse 9. Paul saw a man in a vision. He saw a man who said to him, come we need your help in Macedonia. In other words, if you, if you read through that portion of scripture, Paul had been, um, in, in, initially they had wanted to go to different parts to preach, but the Spirit of God resisted them and did not give them the opportunity. He, he didn't allow them. So God can hinder you from doing some things. But in this case, whilst in that situation, he had an open vision of a man coming to him and saying, you need to come to Macedonia to help us. God is going to speak to you through an open vision today. You will see clearly what to do concerning that trouble that you are having. You will see clearly. God will send you a word concerning the difficulty in your finances, in your business. He will send you instructions and directions even as your heart is open to hear from him. The fourth one we said was face to face. In the book of Exodus 33 and 11. We see a very clear story where uh, Moses was in a tent and the cloud filled that tent. And I believe Joshua was with him. And the Bible tells us that God spoke to Joshua face to face as he does with a, as you do with a man. Can I challenge you that it is possible that God will show, show up in your life and speak to you face to face. Do not be afraid. Open your heart and love God. And he will commune and speak with you. Amen. The fifth way, and this is the one that I think we should spend just a little bit of time. It is that God can speak to you in a still, small voice. First Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to 13. It gives us a story of a man, uh, Elijah, who was, uh, who, who was a prophet. And if you remember the story, he had had uh, a time of victory. He had pulled down and cast down and, and destroyed the, 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 uh, um, the altars of Baal. And he had done some mighty works. And then he got into a season of depression. He, he ran away when Jezebel says, well, I'm going to deal with you for what you've done. And then he ran away. And the Bible tells us in the place where he was feeling sad, feeling down, like many will feel in this unprecedented times where things have happened. Maybe uh, you lost your job or, or perhaps you, the income is not as much or you, you're wondering how to pay your bill. And it seems like things are going completely out of alignment. We see how God begins to show Elijah that he is still available to speak to him and to lead him. God tells him to go to the, uh, to, the, to the front of the cave where he was hiding. And the Bible said that God showed up, uh, uh, used different circumstances to try to show Elijah that he had to listen and hear his word to him. So the first thing God did was he caused a storm to, to blow, a, a powerful wind, and God was not there. God was not in the wind. The Bible says that he caused an earthquake to, to shake in front of him. Just like this season that we find ourselves. The Bible says that once again, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will shake the things above and beneath. And it says that only those things that remain 
Hallelujah. Those things that are rooted in me, those things that are planted in me will remain. In the earthquake that is happening, literally in, in our minds, in our environment, the same thing. The Bible says that those things does not mean that God is not with you because that's not where God is. God is not, you know, you have all the storms and you think, oh my, oh my, I'm gone, I'm dead and I'm down in the water. But can I tell you that those things will not defeat you because God is still speaking in a way that will lead you through the storms, through the earthquake, if you would allow his word to reside in your heart. The thought in the fire came and, and, and so God was not in the fire. And then finally, the Bible tells us in, in 1 Kings 19 and verse 13, it says, And God spoke in a still small voice. And Elijah recognized God in that word and wrapped himself up and got up and he moved in the power of that word. Can I share with you that as you hear the voice of God, as God speaks to you, do not look on your circumstances. Do not look on the things that seem to be going down. Because when men say there is a going down, you will declare that there is a rising up. God will speak to you if you hear him. His word, the word of God is what will deliver you. It is that word that God speaks to you that will navigate you through the storms. It will navigate you and move you and direct you through the earthquake. He will move you past through the fire and it will not kindle upon you. Because the word of God is God himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so, I'm so just, I'm so, I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this word because I believe that in the season, as you begin to consider all these ways that God speaks to you, you will notice right away that he has been speaking to you. He has been speaking to you. The word of God. Let's just look at the word of God. God speaks to us by his word. He speaks to us by his word. In the book of John chapter 1 and verse 1, and also if you look at Hebrews chapter 1, God says in the book of Hebrew, as, as, uh, as, 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 um, as Paul wrote to the Hebrew church, he said something very important. He said that, you know, um, I spoke to you in times past through the prophets, but in these last days, I speak to you through my son, through the word of God. The Son of God is the Word of God. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And His life was a light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And darkness could not comprehend it. If you go down in that, in that chapter, it says something again. It says, As many as received Him, to then receive what? Receive the word. Receive Jesus. As many as received the word, he gave power to become sons of God. Hallelujah. Not of those born of the flesh, of the will of man, born of blood, but born by the will of God. Today, as you hear voice, the voice of God, as you listen to the word, as you read the Bible, you are engaging and opening up your spiritual ears to hear God speak to you. He will cause a word of scripture to come alive in your heart. He will cause that word to, uh, to, 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 to impress in your spirit and you will move in the power of that word. God will say to you, do not be afraid. It's in the word. He will tell you according to his word that you were healed because I bore your sins. I took the pain on your behalf by your stripes that were laid on me. You have been healed. That's the word of God. And the word of God must have proof. And as long as you are receiving this word, you will begin to walk in the power of it. And there will be proof in your life. Let's come to the end of this. And I love this. This last one, I'll just close a message this morning by declaring that each one of us should spend time in the place of worship and praise. Can I tell you that God will speak to you through anointed worship, anointed praise. The Bible tells us in the scriptures of, of, two, of two kings. One was the king of Israel and the king of Judah. They went into battle. 
and they faced adversity. There was no water for their animals. They had spent time trying to go back to, 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 to war against uh, uh, Moab who had abdicated and, and refused to be under Jewish rule at that time, Israel's rule. And the Bible tells us that the kings were faint-hearted. And then the king of Judah said, well, well, let's seek God's face. Is there not a prophet? And they got, Eli they got, they, they got Elisha. Elisha shows up on the scene. And you know what he says? He says, bring me a minstrel so that they will play. And as soon as the minstrel began to play, he began to get revelation. And he began to get a word. He began to hear. And he was able to declare what God had for those kings and for that season. I declare today that as you begin to enter a place of worship, I declare today as the word of God begins to go forth and praises begin to rise, your atmosphere will be set for you to receive a breakthrough. You yourself can raise up the worship, can raise up the songs and worship the king of glory and see God speak to you clearly in those seasons. I want to bless God for the work that has gone forth today. And I want to give you an opportunity. If you have heard this word today and you want to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, this is the time. You may say, I don't know everything. I'm not a scholar in the scriptures. That's all right. You receive, you become born again by his grace through faith. I simply say with me this morning, Lord Jesus, I accept you as the Lord of my life. I, I, I accept that you died for me. I know that you are risen and I know that you're seated with the Father in heavenly places. Lord, would you come into my heart and would you take a dwelling in me and I will love you and I will walk with you in Jesus' name. If you've said this prayer, I declare that you are born again. It is now time to start the journey of eternity and a life of success as you grow and as you listen and grow your spiritual ears to hear from God. Amen. I just want to bless God for what he's done this morning. And as my family and your family all gather listening and celebrating the power of our Savior, I want to ask this morning if there's anyone that has any prayer requests, if there's something you're going through, we are meant to come together in agreement. I want to join with you this morning. Victory House wants to join with you and stand in the ground because we believe that prayer can make a difference. In Indeed, prayer will make a difference in your situation. Send me or send us your prayer request. It will be on your screen, prayer uh, at victoryhouse.ca. Send me and send an email or you can send it to pastor at victoryhouse.ca and we will respond to you and join with you in prayer. And also, if you want to support this ministry, as the word of God goes into the nations, even now through our broadcast on the internet, I want to encourage you to sow and to give into this work as the Lord lays in your heart. I'm trusting that God is stirring up your heart right now and that if you have the ability and capacity, would you sow to us? The information will be on your screen. We have about three ways you can give. You can give by texting to the number on your screen or you can ask actually send an e-transfer to finance at victoryhouse.ca finance f-i-n-a-n-c-e at victoryhouse.ca or you can simply go on our website and you will see an opportunity a place just type gifts giving and you'll be able to give on our website i'm so grateful for the opportunity to have been in your home today would you join us send us come 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 um, spend time with us if you're looking for a church or you you're trusting that god is calling you to a deeper walk with him and on Wednesdays, we have a Bible study. If you would like to learn more, if you would like to understand how to hear God, how to walk in faith, send us an e your email. Send us a, a, a message through connect at victoryhouse.ca and we'll reach out to you 
to let you know how you can join those Bible studies to help you in your life of victory. May the Lord bless you today. May He cause His face to shine upon you, upon your family. May He cause you to experience victory. May He bring healing. May He, may he bring joy. May He bring His peace that passes all knowledge into your life today. We bless God. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen.